Hi, this is Sahil, and uh, this is you, the developer. Uh, you typically use Yeoman Generator to generate SharePoint framework solutions. So what happens is that when you need a React solution, the SharePoint framework Yeoman Generator helps you generate a React solution. When you need a knockout solution, it helps you generate a knockout SharePoint framework solution. So as we get new frameworks, we'll just keep adding on to this skyscraper. So what happens is that when you get a new version of React, uh, or rather even when you install the latest version of SPFX, it's already out of date. The newest version of React has moved on. So you can't use the Yeoman generator anymore. Uh, actually, there are a lot of scenarios where you can't use the Yeoman generator, like if you have any customizations, even if a new version of SharePoint framework comes out, you have to hand edit the generated template. If you've taken dependency on third-party libraries, custom build steps, integration with your source control, etc. My point is that you should treat the Yeoman generator as a starting point. You, you need to take control of the generated project in most real-world scenarios. Now let's see how do we work with Angular. Well, you have Angular CLI with which we generate Angular solutions. A lot of similar challenges apply there, but Angular CLI has gone through many iterations that people have gotten very comfortable using Angular CLI with Angular. So what ideally we want, you, you want to own the source code at the end of the day, but what you want is a project template that has Angular CLI and SPFX together so it gives you an Angular plus SPFX solution. And the advantage of doing that is that everything that works with Angular works with Angular CLI. Now, in the community also, you're going to find a lot of help on Angular CLI. If you're a hardcore Angular developer, chances are that you will find yourself to be more familiar with Angular CLI and you're moving your code into SPFX. So, you know, what is driving what is the question. So I'm a big fan of Angular and I like SPFX. So I put together this project template uh, where I have, you know, this is a concept template which I've been using in my projects, uh, which uses Angular CLI, supports everything, ART, SAS, uh, lazy loading, everything that you'd expect from Angular. And uh, it works with SPFX in the way you'd expect it to work with SPFX. So let me talk about that with a demo. So I'm on a Windows 10 machine here that is already pre-configured to work with SPFX, but everything I'm showing you will work on a Mac as well. In fact, I wrote all this code on a Mac. Uh, I'm just using the Windows machine for recording purposes. So uh, let me show you what all I have here, node dash dash version. So that's my node version, npm dash dash version. So that's my npm version when it wakes up, okay. And uh, let me show you my local packages, npm list dash g dash dash depth zero. That should show me my uh, packages that are globally installed. So there you go. So I have the 1.4.1 SharePoint Yeoman generator globally installed and gulp yarn and all that other stuff, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and clone this GitHub repo. So I'm going to simply say git clone and let's go into that repo. Let's uh, here and let's go ahead and run yarn install. So this will go ahead and you know download all the node modules. You know what this does. So let's wait for this to finish. So once yarn install finishes, it the uh, the git thing is only because it created a yarn file. I guess I could check that in, but that's uh, you know not very important. Let's go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. And those of you who are familiar with Angular CLI, you would immediately recognize this as an Angular CLI project with a few extra things. Let me give you a high level overview of how this is put together. So the start command has been changed to gulp serve because uh, SharePoint framework prefers to use gulp. So that's why that is. I have added the SPFX stuff right in this project, including in the dev dependencies, the necessary dev dependencies. I have customized the build process a little bit. So there is that. And uh, in the source, this is where things get interesting. In the source, I have an entry point web part, which the config files, these are the SPFX config files, they point you to the starter web part. 
And this starter web part inherits from base client side web part. And this is basically bootstrapping an Angular app, okay? It's using app module ng factory, so it is, uh, it is AOT ready and all of that. So, uh, and also there is a property that it has, which is description. And this description, we basically set it up as an element. As you see here, let me make this a little bit smaller. So the description is sent in as a property. Now you may be asking, what about Angular elements? Why didn't I use Angular elements here? Well, for one, it is not released yet. Second, Angular elements is actually not required to work with SPFX. It's, I, I don't know where that rumor came from, but whatever, it's not required. Certainly, Angular elements will help the picture a lot uh, because it makes things very standards compliant. However, it's not required, strictly speaking. I would also venture to guess that when the Angular team finishes Angular elements, currently slated for Angular 6, it will work with Angular CLI for sure. Now, inside of this app folder here, you see this is just an Angular app, okay? That is the beauty of this solution, that you, you write your code in Angular as you normally would, and therefore your main skill is still Angular, but you are running in SPFX, you have full access to the SPFX context, you know, you are running, uh, you have the SPFX stuff in your, uh, you know, package.json, so you're writing Angular code in an Angular format, so you get, you know, concepts like dependency injection, you get concepts like if you want to use material design, lazy loading, um, you know, writing tests, uh, publishing this as a library, all that investment that comes with Angular, you get that in SPFX, and that's the real value here. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna say gulp serve. I've already done gulp trust dev cert on this machine. So let me just go ahead and do gulp serve. And it fires up the local workbench as you would expect. And So once this loads, I'm going to drop my Angular CLI web part. Hey, seems to work. Actually, let me try and edit this. And I'm going to say, hey, this is awesome. And that seems to work just as you'd expect an SPFX web part to behave. But they say, you can't add a second Angular web part on the same page. No, you can. Look at that, you can add a third. You can add a fourth. I mean, it's not a problem. You can add as many as you want. In fact, because Angular and Angular CLI has all this investment in you know, being able to separate things out as modules, uh, you know, I have full control on the build process. So I, I think this is absolutely amazing. Uh, I can externalize these libraries or parts of my code base and make it reusable across multiple places. So this is totally separate from the above web part spellings. You know, please pardon those, but here you go. So yeah, this seems to work. Let's delete this. Let's, uh, oops, sorry, let's delete. Yes. So anyway, you see that it works, but the real test, will it work in SharePoint? Because you know how that goes. Okay, so let's try that. So control C, yes. So I'm going to say gulp. So this is, if you're familiar with SPFX, this is SPFX 101, gulp dash dash ship. Actually, let me do gulp clean first. Gulp clean, so it'll just clear out all the temporary files. And I'm gonna say gulp dash dash ship. Now I will mention that I am going to use the automatic client assets deployment here, this guy here, okay? Just to keep things simple, I've already enabled CDN on my tenancy. So you can see that my uh, you know path to CDN is left as default. So, but if you want to put this in a CDN, it works with that as well. I've tested it, uh, you know, you can, you're welcome to test it as well. Okay, here we go. So then gulp package solution dash dash ship. Here we go. Now let's go ahead and find that SPPKG file. That should be under SharePoint slash solution. Imagine SharePoint folder in an Angular CLI project. So here you go, SPFX SPPKG, that's great. Let's go to my tenancy. 
So that would be, let's go to the app catalog first. Apps for SharePoint. And let's drag drop that in here. So SharePoint Online, that looks good. Click on deploy. And I'm gonna test this in a classic site, but I've tested it in a modern site. It works there as well. So WinSmarts Dev slash test classic. So that's a classic site. Here I'm going to say add an app. I'm going to add my Angular CLI SPFX solution. It's gray right now. Refresh a couple of times, wait for this to get enabled. Once this is enabled, then hopefully my web part should be available for me to use. Page, edit, insert a web part. Again, look for that other category, that's the default. These are just SPFX concepts. So I'm gonna drop this Angular CLI web part here. And it works, hello. Uh, can I edit it? Let's try. So configure. Yay. Yeah, seems to work. And the acid test, can I drop a second one? Yep, I can drop a second one too. So you see, you can use Angular CLI with SPFX and everything that Angular brings you. And you can do this. This actually even works with Angular 4. I've been using it for almost a year and a half. Uh, so I don't know what the official story will look like, but uh, for many reasons that I mentioned, I prefer to use Angular CLI over a handcrafted Angular project when I'm working with Angular. There, and I think a lot of Angular developers will, will agree with me on that. Okay, cool. Hope you found this useful. You'll find all the relevant links in the bottom, at the bottom of the video uh, as a first comment or something or description. Uh, would love to get your feedback on this and see what you think of it. Thanks.